Hey everybody, as promised, I was going to go through the eight major inflammatory causing foods that when combined can cause some serious issues for your gut. So first and foremost, let's talk about eggs for a second because eggs are one of those things that seems like they're in everything and what the heck do we do about this if we suspect that maybe we're consuming too many eggs, maybe egg might be an issue. Well, one of the fun things that I do quite often actually is mix a little curry powder with sunflower seeds. I don't know if you can tell. Those are sunflower seeds. And what you do is you actually put a little oil in your pan, saute them kind of lightly, don't put it on more than like two of a heat, and just toss the curry powder in there. So you have a nice like curried, and so they're yellow, and they're like mashed up a little bit of the sunflower seeds. Now you could put them into a grinder and grind them a little bit first and do that as well, but I like to do it just as is. So if you want even better option for you to be able to digest, then the sprouted sunflower seeds are going to be your best option in that bag. So that is your vegan eggs. The other vegan egg thing here is flax. So you take one tablespoon of flax, put three tablespoons of water. I often will just put it in a cup like this and just Wix it, whip it up, let it sit for about five minutes, and you've got yourself in like a sticky consistency that's much like eggs. And now do I recommend sauteing it up and eating it like an egg? No, this is for baking. Don't do this if it's gonna be, if you wanna make eggs and you want something like eggs, use the sunflower seeds and the curry powder. But if you're looking at a recipe, the flax eggs really do work. You can also do it with chia, but I don't love it as much because chia is just kind of crunchy. Whereas the flax, yes, it leaves like a little flaky consistency to whatever you're making, but it does help to hold things together like an egg would. So that would be your egg substitutes. Are there plenty of other options out there? Yes, there's brands that make egg substitutes, but I'm kind of showing you what I've got in my kitchen and, and so you can see like, what I use on a daily basis. So that's eggs. Let's talk dairy. Now dairy substitutes are a big thing for me because I don't know if you can tell, I got a pimple. Yeah, dairy does that to me. Parmesan alternative, nutritional yeast. This is something we use quite often in our house and it's rich in B12 and it also has a little bit of B6 in it. So you get some vitamins in this too. And it kind of tastes a little cheesy. Now, is it exactly like dairy? No, I grew up next to Wisconsin. There's no substitute really. But this is the one in a pinch. The other thing that I use, and I don't have anything on me, but wanted to talk about it, is there's a website called The Minimalist, so minimalistbaker.com. It's a vegan website, but they have the best like nacho cheese, vegan nacho cheese recipes. Because the stuff you buy in the store that's in the bags, too much junk in there. It's so processed, and I think it's very close to plastic when you get down to it. But you can use cashews, soaked cashews, and you can make yourself some really nice creamy sauces with those cashews. The other thing you can do is you can use garbanzo beans and you can use like cannellini or great northern beans. And those can be used, blended up really nicely into a creamy sauce. They could be a substitute for ricotta cheese. They could be a substitute for say, if you need like an Alfredo type of sauce. Sometimes I will mix a combination of cashews and beans just to kind of offset things because buying a lot of cashews can get expensive. Beans, not so expensive. So things to think about when you're looking at dairy alternatives. And if you want me to do a recipe with one of these, I can go and buy stuff and make it and you can see how I do it. But the Minimalist Baker does have an amazing vegan lasagna with zucchini noodles. That's like my go-to thing. Check it out. Highly recommend it. Now, next, I'm looking at my notes because I don't want to get off task. There are a lot of different options for pasta and, and wheat alternatives. I'm not going to go into that. But what I will say because it's kind of self-explanatory these days. A lot of folks are using zucchini noodles or sweet potato noodles or spaghetti squash instead of pasta noodles. Bread alternative, so gluten-free bread, is not healthier than regular bread. It's just as processed, just the same. So I highly recommend that if you're a bread addict, you really want to be thinking about how can you make bread at home with higher quality wheat? Because wheat really, I don't think, is the enemy. I think it's what's been done to the wheat. I think it's the glyphosate that's been used to help to get the weeds off, but also to help let down the wheat kernels. I think that's a big issue, but I don't think it's the wheat itself. Einkorn wheat 
E-I-N-K-O-R-N wheat is amazing product. Jovial Foods has it. It comes in little bags. I don't have any on hand today, but that is one of my favorite brands. Now, other brands, Anna's Flour. It's an Italian flour imported from Italy where they can't use all of the pesticides and things that we have here. Now, why am I not saying go out and buy organic flour? Well, you could, but I do find that, unfortunately, we got to get something outside of the U.S. or something in a more heart like like not a hearty wheat but more like a the the einkorn wheat is considered a a very basic or or old school type of wheat that hasn't been manipulated like some of the more common wheat brands or, or wheat strains that we use so that's why so consider trying those if you do have trouble with wheat and really look at like do I really need all the bread do I really need all of the the grains in my diet and can I alternate a little bit and use more zucchinis more cauliflower more things of that nature. I often will use butternut squash instead of zucchini noodles as well, or I will swap in different things. Um, I, I had mentioned briefly portobello mushrooms as like my caps for my my burger. I also use lettuce wraps a lot, like romaine lettuce, or I'll go into cabbage and things of that nature. Okay, so that's kind of my brief on the wheat. Next thing is soy. What do we do about soy? Because soy oil, soybean oils, vegetable oil, if you see that in a label, that implies there is going to be some soybean oil in there. So I use coconut aminos exclusively. Oh, there you go. Now you can choose whatever brand. I just happen to have Bragg's. But the thing to think about with coconut aminos is that they do carry a little bit of sugar and add a little sweetness to flavors. But great alternative to soy. Now, a lot of people will ask me, what about tamari? Tamari is still soy. It just doesn't have wheat in it. So if you're trying to avoid the wheat, you could go with tamari. Now, are there any other really good soy alternatives? Not so much. Really, you're looking at coconut aminos as your main thing if you're looking at a soy sauce alternative. What about an edamame alternative? Use, use sugar snap peas, use things of that nature. Most recipes will flux in and out with that. You could use regular beans, garbanzo beans, if you wanted to for an edamame, which is the soybean, like the little green pod with the, the little soybean peas that they look like. You could use peas too for that matter. Now, sugar. What the heck is the deal with sugar? Really, white refined sugar is what it is. It's processed. It's highly refined. Unless we can find bits of the sugar cane, which come in like little cane pieces. If you've been to Mexico, sometimes you've seen those. But what I typically will use instead of that, because it's really hard to chew on those and, and use them, I use a lot of maple syrup. I also will use raw honey. Now, this is one of my dad's favorite ones. I like more local ones, but this is what we have in the house. I will also use dates and date paste. I make the date paste myself. I grind up the dates in, in the food processor. And those are my sweeteners for the house. I don't tend to use as much sugar. If I'm making something like a baking item, sometimes I will flat out sub maple syrup for the sugar. Kind of depends on the recipe because you have to keep in mind that sugar is a granular substance and not liquid like the maple syrup. But if you have questions on that, I can totally help you if you want details in that department. But those are my sugar substitutes. You notice there's no stevia here. The reason being is because all commercial products of stevia have corn infused in them. Yes, read your labels, you'll see dextrose, maltodextrose, dextrin, that is sugar and it's another name for it. So I don't use processed stevia. I don't use lohanguo, which, which monk fruit, things of that nature. I like those two. It's easier for the gut to tolerate the other ones I've seen trouble with. Now, corn. What do we do about corn? If you want corn tortillas, there's cassava flour now, there's coconut flour, and there's almond flour. I usually will mix with coconut flour because coconut flour on its own does not stick together very well. The cassava flour makes things very crispy and can be kind of dense, but there's brands like the Siete Foods that has cassava flour tortillas. If you want to try that out, I would recommend trying them. They're the most expensive tortillas you'll ever have, but <laughs> try them out. I do make tortillas sometimes at home. I haven't done it for a while. We've just kind of went to eating cabbage leaves or things of that nature instead or using kale if it's in season for a taco or if I'm doing a, an enchilada, I will use a cabbage leaf so it's more like a, a cabbage bake versus a true enchilada. But 
these are some of the things corn is an issue for me and so that's why um, the other big thing is corn is that corn starch is in a lot of things instead of corn starch use arrowroot powder this is a great alternative to it less hypoallergenic i don't react to it most people who have corn allergies do not have trouble with arrowroot i also have seen people use tapioca root as well or not tapioca root tapioca flour but some people will have an allergic reaction to tapioca so keep that in mind but really with corn the biggest factor is read your labels read 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 your labels dextrin maltodextrin dextrose these are all sh the corn hidden in those if you want more info on that listen to my podcast with kathleen the allergy chef i think is episode 273 we talk all about corn actually it might even be 271 but 271 and 273 we talk about ingredients and things of that nature now the next thing peanuts what do you do about peanuts if you have a peanut allergy really a great alternative is actually sunflower seeds grinding these guys up now sun butter if you've ever had it it's kind of bitter it's not as delicious but if you add a little honey to it or maple syrup, you can have it taste a little bit better. And I will use those in an alternative situation. I also use sesame seeds as an alternative to peanuts. Like say I'm looking at a peanut sauce for an Asian dish, I will use sesame instead of peanut quite often. And tahini being the ground of sesame. I mean, it's, it's good stuff as long as you don't, of course, have a sesame allergy. Now, is that a common allergy? It can be for some people, but I tend to defer to the sunflower seeds first for a lot of folks because of the, the sensitivity to the sesame. I'm okay with sesame, so I will often use it as my substitute for peanuts in a recipe. Have I used cashew and other nuts? Yes, but keep in mind, we're talking tree nuts now. That's a cashew and almond is a tree nut. So if we're going to be getting away from the tree nut being an issue for someone, you're looking at seeds. Pumpkin seeds can also be a viable option for an alternative to peanuts. Gives it a little bit different of a taste as well. So this is where you got to start adding in a little bit of the syrups to give it a little sweeter flavor, or you can add in a little bit of sunflower oil to have a little bit more of a nutty flavor on that. And I've also used avocado oil. Um, keep in mind, avocado is high histamine. So if there's an allergy issue and you're trying to sleuth things out, sunflower might be a better option in this case. Olive oil is too bitter. You don't want to mix that with it. Side note. All right. Last but not least, what about shellfish allergies? And what if you want fish sauce, but you realize that it's made from either shrimp or oysters and you or clam and you can't tolerate it? minimalist baker i know i'm on repeat with this gal here but she's got a great website and her stuff's really tested well and every time i've made something from there i've not been disappointed she has a vegan soy sauce or not soy sauce shellfish sauce and it's made from seaweed it's also made out of a list over here so pardon me it has chickpea miso um as an option instead of soy miso because miso is made from soy so it's ch chickpea instead and then coconut aminos with it you could use tamari if you don't have an issue with um soy but keep in mind if shellfish is a, an allergy head over and you want some fish sauce so you want to make say a pad thai or say you want to make any type of, of Asian, Vietnamese, or even a Thai dish, you want to look at using some fish sauce. And honestly, I like the vegan sauce better than the real deal because it just doesn't smell as gross, but tastes just the same. So there you have it. You guys have my big way of how I sub all the different things. If you want to see recipes, you want to see how I make the, the things up in flesh, let me know. We can go from there. All right. Enjoy.